There were many protesters but few faithless electors as Donald Trump won the Electoral College vote on Monday, ensuring he will become America's 45th president. An effort by anti-Trump forces to persuade Republican electors to abandon the president-elect came to practically nothing and the process unfolded largely according to its traditions. Trump's polarizing victory November 8 and the fact Democrat Hillary Clinton had won the national popular vote had stirred an intense lobbying effort, but to no avail. We did it. Trump tweeted Monday evening. Thank you to all of my great supporters, we just officially won the election, despite all of the distorted and inaccurate media. Quotation mark. He later issued a statement saying, with this historic step we can look forward to the bright future ahead. I will work hard to unite our country and be the president of all Americans. Quotation mark. Even one of Trump's fiercest Republican rivals, Ohio Governor John Kosich, said it was time to get behind the president-elect. We want unity, we want love, Kosich said as Ohio's electors voted to back Trump at a state's house ceremony. Kosich refused to endorse or even vote for Trump in the election. With all states voting, Trump finished with 304 votes and Clinton had 227. It takes 270 electoral college votes to win the presidency. Texas put Trump over the top, despite two Republican electors casting protest votes. Befitting an election filled with acrimony, thousands of protesters converged on state capitals across the country Monday, urging Republican electors to abandon their party's winning candidate. More than 200 demonstrators braved freezing temperatures at Pennsylvania's capital, chanting, No Trump, no KKK, no fascist USA. And no treason, no Trump. Quotation mark. In Madison, Wisconsin, protesters shouted, cried and sang Silent Night. In Augusta, Maine, they banged on drums and held signs that said, Don't let Putin pick our president, referring to Russian President Vladimir Putin. Despite the noise outside state capitals, Inside, the voting went pretty much as planned. In Nashville, Tennessee, one audience member tried to read out some scripture before the ballots were cast, but was told he could not speak. We certainly appreciate the scripture, state election coordinator Mark Goyne said from the podium. The answer is no. Quotation mark. With all Republican states reporting, Trump lost only the two electors in Texas. One voted for Kosich, the Ohio governor, the other voted for former Texas rep. Ron Paul. Clinton lost four electors in Washington state, three voted for former Secretary of State Colin Powell and one voted for Native American tribal leader Faith Spotted Eagle. She also lost an elector in Hawaii to Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Clinton beat Sanders in the Democratic primaries. Several Democratic electors in other states tried to vote for protest candidates but they either changed their votes to Clinton or were replaced. The Electoral College has 538 members, with the number allocated to each state based on how many representatives it has in the House plus one for each senator. The District of Columbia gets three, despite the fact that the home to Congress has no vote in Congress. Republican electors were deluged with emails, phone calls and letters urging them not to support Trump. Many of the emails are part of coordinated campaigns. In Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Elector Charlie Buckles reached out to Trump's opponents after the New York businessman got all of the state's eight votes. For those of you who wished it had gone another way, I thank you for being here, said Buckles, the state GOP finance chairman. I thank you for your passion for our country. Quotation mark. There is no constitutional provision or federal law that requires electors to vote for the candidate who won their state, though some states require their electors to vote for the winning candidate. Those laws, however, are rarely tested. More than 99% of electors through U.S. history have voted for the candidate who won their state. Of those who refused, none has ever been prosecuted, according to the National Archives. Some Democrats have argued that the Electoral College is undemocratic because it gives more weight to less populated states. That is how Clinton, who got more than 2.8 million more votes nationwide, lost the election to Trump. Some have also tried to dissuade Trump voters by arguing that he is unsuited to the job. Others cite the CIA's assessment that Russia engaged in computer hacking to sway the election in favor of the Republican. When the founders of our country created the Electoral College 200 plus years ago, they didn't have confidence in the average white man who had property, 
because that's who got to vote, said Sean Terrace, a Democratic elector from Ventura, California. It just seems so undemocratic to me that people other than the voters get to choose who leads the country. Quotation mark. A joint session of Congress is scheduled for Jan. 6 to certify the results of the Electoral College vote, with Vice President Joe Biden presiding as President of the Senate. Once the result is certified, the winner, almost certainly Trump, will be sworn in on Jan. 20. Associated Press writers Paul Weber in Austin, Texas, Julie Carr Smith in Columbus, Ohio, Mark Levy in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, Scott Bauer in Madison, Wisconsin, Eric Schelzig and Jonathan Matisse in Nashville, Tennessee, Kathleen Flutie and Alex Sands in Atlanta, Melinda Deslata in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Marina Villeneuve reported from Augusta, Maine, Rachel Lacorte in Olympia, Washington, and Juliet A. Williams in Sacramento, California, contributed to this report. If you like this video please leave a like and subscribe.